Forgotten butter from the 1970s, then and now. You probably didn't know this, but the butter we eat today isn't the same butter that was around in the 1970s. Back then, butter was a pure, natural product made in small batches by local artisans. It was rich, creamy, and full of flavor, something completely different from the mass-produced version we now find in grocery stores. But what happened, and why has butter changed so much from what it once was? If you stepped into a kitchen in the early 70s, you'd likely find butter made the old-fashioned way. It came from small, family-run dairies that sourced milk from cows raised on fresh pasture. The butter they made was properly handcrafted, and the result was a product that had a deep, complex flavor, a golden color, and a creamy texture that melted perfectly over warm bread. Back then, butter wasn't just a staple, it was a craft. The quality depended on the season, the cow's diet, and the skill of the person making it. Some butters were naturally sweet, while others had a tangy depth, thanks to traditional fermentation techniques. It was the kind of butter that didn't need additives or artificial enhancements because it was already perfect. But as the 1970s progressed, this small-scale artisanal approach to butter making began to disappear. The days of small-scale handcrafted butter were numbered, replaced by an era of large-scale mechanized production. This shift wasn't driven by a desire to improve butter, but rather a need to increase output, lower costs, and meet the demands of a rapidly growing and increasingly urbanized population. At the heart of this transformation was the industrial dairy farm. Instead of cows grazing freely on open pastures, they were now confined to feedlots, where their diet was carefully controlled to maximize milk production. These cows were often fed grains, soy, and even byproducts from other industries, rather than the fresh grass that had once been the foundation of high-quality butter. This change in diet had a huge impact on the milk itself, altering its fat composition and reducing the levels of beneficial nutrients, such as omega-3 fatty acids and vitamins like A and K2. The effects were very visible. Butter made from this new industrial milk lacked the depth of flavor and rich texture that people had become accustomed to. The natural golden color, which came from beta carotene in fresh grass, faded to a pale, almost white color. Without the complexity that came from traditional churning and fermentation, the butter tasted bland. But companies weren't about to let this decline in quality hurt their sales. So they made a simple adjustment. They added more salt. But you see, salt wasn't just a flavor enhancer. It masked the off notes caused by large-scale production, extending butter's shelf life and giving it a consistency that industrial producers could standardize. Before this, salted butter existed, but it wasn't the default. Consumers who wanted salt in their butter would often add it themselves, adjusting it to their taste. But now, with the increasing dominance of factory-made butter, salted butter had become the new normal. Not because it was better, but because it was necessary to compensate for the lower quality. Another major change came in the form of processing. Traditional butter making was a slow, careful process that allowed the cream to develop natural flavors over time. But industrial butter was made as quickly as possible, often using high-speed centrifuges to separate cream from milk, and industrial churners to produce butter in massive quantities. These machines worked fast, but they stripped the butter of its complexity, making it a uniform one-note product. To make things worse, some companies even started blending butter with low-cost ingredients to stretch production further. While pure butter had once been the standard, manufacturers began experimenting with additives like lecithin, artificial coloring, and even small amounts of vegetable oil to make butter more spreadable straight from the fridge. These alterations further diluted what real butter had once been. By the late 70s, the butter that most people were eating was nothing like what they had a few years prior. It had become a mass-produced commodity, stripped of its natural flavors and textures in the name of efficiency. But wait, it gets even worse. This was also the decade where margarine started gaining traction as a butter alternative. At the time, the fear of dietary fats, particularly saturated fats, was at an all-time high. Nutritionists, influenced by emerging studies, began advising people to cut back on butter, claiming that its high cholesterol content could contribute to heart disease. Margarine manufacturers jumped on this trend, marketing their product as the healthier choice. Unlike butter, margarine was made from vegetable oils, which were heavily processed and chemically altered to resemble butter in both taste and texture. It was cheaper to produce, easier to store, and could be sold with aggressive health claims that appealed to an increasingly health-conscious public. The marketing campaigns were relentless. Margarine brands positioned themselves as the smarter, more modern alternative to old-fashioned butter. They used celebrity endorsements, scientific-sounding claims, and even government-backed nutritional guidelines to convince consumers that switching to margarine was a responsible choice. 
Many families made the switch, unknowingly replacing real butter with a product that was far from natural. As the years went on, however, people started seeing margarine for what it truly was. Studies started revealing the dangers of trans fats, the very thing that made margarine spreadable and long-lasting, linking them to an increased risk of heart disease. By the 1990s and early 2000s, health experts reversed their stance and butter, once the bad guy, made a comeback. But well butter was back on grocery store shelves and dinner tables. It wasn't the same butter that had existed at the start of the 1970s. The industrialization of butter production was already deeply ingrained and there was no going back. The small dairies that had once made high-quality artisanal butter had mostly vanished, unable to compete with large-scale factories. The butter industry was now dominated by companies who just wanted to make more money and didn't even care about what they made. Unknown to the people back then, the world had lost the art of making real butter. Unlike the rich, golden butter of the past, today's mass-produced butter is often pale, very firm, and lacks depth of flavor. Most butter sold in supermarkets is made from cream that is pasteurized at extremely high temperatures, a process that kills both harmful and beneficial bacteria. While pasteurization is necessary for food safety and large-scale operations, it also eliminates the natural bacteria that once gave butter its unique taste and complexity. Traditional slow churning has been replaced by rapid mechanical churning, producing a more uniform but less flavorful product. Even worse, the cows that produce the milk for today's butter are often raised in industrialized conditions and fed diets high in grain and soy rather than fresh grass. This results in milk with a different fat composition, producing butter that is nutritionally inferior to what was made decades ago. The beta carotene that once gave butter its natural golden hue is largely absent, leading some companies to add artificial coloring to make it look more like the butter of the past. Despite these changes, there has been a slow but growing movement to revive the traditional butter making process. Some small batch creameries have emerged, producing butter the old fashioned way with grass fed cows and slow churning methods. These artisanal butters have a deeper, more complex flavor, a softer texture, and a naturally golden color, resembling the butter that was around before industrialization took over. However, these high quality butters remain a niche product, often more expensive and harder to find than the standard grocery store varieties. Most people today don't realize just how much butter has changed. They have grown up with the industrialized version, never knowing that butter used to taste richer, spread more smoothly, and provide a completely different experience. Now, you might be thinking, well, the change couldn't have been much since butter is still delicious. But honestly, most of the taste of today's butter comes from chemicals added to it. The good news is that you can still try out butter the way it is supposed to be. There are several artisanal butter makers out there who make butter the natural way with no chemicals or additives. Is there any hope that companies will go back to making butter the way it should be? To be honest, it doesn't look like it will get any better. Did you ever have the chance to taste real, old-fashioned butter? Or have you ever only known the modern, mass-produced version? Let us know in the comments!